हेलो व्यूअर्स वेलकम टू द कोर्स ऑफ इंट्रोडक्टरी प्लांट पैथोलॉजी टुडे वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द प्लांट पैथोजन बैक्टीरिया एंड इन बैक्टीरिया वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द डायग्नोसिस वेजिटेटिव रिप्रोडक्शन एंड टेक्सोनॉमी फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट द सिम्टोमेटोलॉजी in the bacteria that is what type of symptoms usually we see uh, in the bacteria affected plants and especially our crop plants symptoms of bacterial disease are extremely varied and usually characteristics of the particular pathogen and here we discuss about the most uh, common types of symptoms we see in the plants the spots on the leaves and fruit blights or deadening of tissues on leaves stems or tree trunks rots of many part of the plant usually root or tubers and wilts due to plugging of vascular tissues this is the first uh, symptom i am showing you here the about the black spot lesion on peach leaf showing short holes you are seeing here these are the holes these are the infected uh, leaf spots and these are the holes caused by the bacteria holes actually contain the plant pathogenic infection in the plants and uh, it is nowadays used uh, for taking as a plant resistance this is the very very common uh, disease of uh, caused by bacteria xanthomonas citri and this is known as citrus canker here we are seeing the raised uh, irregular uh, brownish spots on the leaves and uh, fruits are also affected by the disease and uh, in the market it is a very very common sight when we uh, go for the purchasing of vegetables and we see the corky brownish uh, raised spots on the citrus fruits uh, generally we find with the water uh, watery spots on the fruits so this is uh, all caused by the xanthomonas citri and citrus canker is the name of the disease these are the characteristic symptoms and it helps us for identification of a particular type of bacteria in the plants here we are looking into the potato bacterial uh, wilt as i told you earlier that uh, the wilt are the very very important bacterial disease because they are caused by the plugging of the vascular tissues and uh, bacterial after bacterial infections the uh, pathogens plug the uh, tissues uh, which conducts the minerals and water translocation in the living plants and therefore uh, the water and mineral nutrition is not available to the affected plants and uh, ultimately after infection uh, they Uh, show the drooping of the leaves as you are seeing here the leaves are showing the drooping uh, site and uh, it is the potato uh, plant which showing the wilt uh, infection secondly this is the bacterial wilt stream when we cut the stem of the affected plant and we dip it in the clean uh, clear water after a few time we can see a streaming of the bacteria coming out from the cut ends of the stems and this is the characteristic identification of the bacterial infection in the plants especially the wilt infections then this is the geranium bacterial blight you are seeing here the bacterial blight spots which is causing the most severe diseases in the geranium our ornamental plants then this is the you see this is very very important uh, slide i am showing you here because this is a common type of uh, thing we can observe in the bacteria affected plants you see here the bacterial ooze in the drop uh, in the shape of the water droplets you see here and it is coming out from within the water soaked lesions affected with the bacterial pathogens then the early water soaking in tomato you can see water soaked spots on the tomato leaves this is early symptom and this is the later symptom and in the 
most uh, type of the bacterial infections we find this type of uh, greasy looking bacterial spots having dark uh, black to brownish spots with a yellow halo around it and uh, this is a late stage of the bacterial infection we can say that if this type of symptoms are observed in the affected plant we can say that uh, this is the bacterial infection which is showing in the late stage this is the spots on the xylella fastidiosa in the grapes actually xylella is a type of uh, causal organism which is very very difficult to culture uh, artificially on the different uh, artificial nutritive medium otherwise uh, bacteria are easily culturable on the artificial media but the fastidious uh, nature of bacteria is uh, causing difficulty in culturing of such type of uh, organisms. This I earlier told you about the crown gall. This is a typical uh, crown gall caused by agrobacterium tumefaciens and this is the crown gall caused by agrobacterium vitis in the grape uh, plants and these are the crown galls which are very very akin to the cells uh, as we found in the cancer in the human beings and a lot of researches are being conducted uh, in the recent times by on the crown galls to study nature of cancer in our human beings. Then we come to the dissemination of the bacteria. When the plants are affected, uh, how they disseminate the disease in the other healthy plants. So, dissemination of plant pathogenic bacteria commonly occurs by wind blown soil that cause plant wounding particularly during or after rains. Infested or infected seed or any plant part can be sources of bacterial inoculum. Machinery, clothing, packing material and water can also disseminate pathogens as can insects and birds. This is I am showing here the typical life cycle of a bacterium that uh, how the bacteria completes its life cycle. So here you see uh, the bacteria in the potato actually we, it is the showing the potato disease and this is the uh, potato in affected by the bacterial disease. This is the stem and infection of the tuber infected stolon and this is the cross section of the infected stolon. This is showing the blackening and uh, darkening of the tissues due to the infection and the infection spread during the storage. When is, uh, the potato is stored under the warehouses, uh, they are affected uh, bacteria are disseminated in the other healthy tubers. Then desiccated uh, uh, rotten tubers we are seeing here, they are rotted by the pathogens. Then this is the bacterial pathogen and the bacteria overwinter in insect uh, pupae, rotten vegetables on host plants and occasionally in soil also. So they again insect lay egg over potato uh, seed pieces and the bacteria are inside those eggs. So, contaminated uh, larvae carry the bacteria into the tuber, these are the bacteria and again the cork layer forms around the infected tissues. You see here this is the uh, pupae in which the bacteria is there and the corky type of structures are seen here is caused by the bacterial infection and then the bacteria is spread from tuber into the young stem and the roots. And likewise, the bacteria in intercellular sex and they collapse the cell. This type of life cycle is there in the bacteria. And again, this is a different type of cycle. We are showing the maggots in the pupae in the soil and emerging adults carry the bacteria to other plants. And here we see the plants are infected through soil borne bacteria and uh, in the here it is in the carrot and Daucus carota you see here the bacterial infection and again the bacteria complete the life cycle in this way. Then bacterial classification. 
as we know the classification is very very important thing um, in studying the bacteria because there are a large number of uh, bacterial organisms and if we classify them in a particular uh, type of order scientifically then we can easily uh, come to know that what type of bacteria is causing what type of disease in the plants. So, this is the bacterial classification and the motile cells are having long whip like flagella which may arise from one or both ends of the cell they are known as polar or from all over the cell they are known as peritrichus and by the nature of the this bacterial phyli we can identify those type of bacteria. So, based on flagella arrangement bacteria are classified into these six groups. First is the monotrichus. It is having single polar flagellum at one end. This is found mostly in the xanthomonas. Then amphitrichus, single polar flagellum at both the ends. This is found in the pseudomonas. And then cephalotrichus, several flagella at one end, for example, in this pseudomonas fluorescence. Yes, based on flagellar arrangement, in continuation of this type of arrangements, there is lophotrichus bacteria, there are several polar flagella at both the ends. This is found in spirillum. Then subpolar, single subpolar flagellum, this is found in agrobacterium. Then peritrichus, the flagella are all over the cell, for example, in Irvinia. And many bacteria have filamentous appendages called fimbriae or pili. And this picture is showing the arrangement of flagella on bacteria in general. This is the monotrichus having the polar type of uh, flagella, lophotrichus, so many uh, flagella are there, peritrichus on all the cell surfaces and the amphitrichus on both the ends of the bacterial cell. Then I am trying to showing here the types of flagella looking in under the microscope because for seeing the bacterial cells we have to have so many arrangements in the microscope. This is the dark field microscopy where we will look into the bacteria and we will find uh, this type of bacterial cell under the microscope. Here it is the phase contrast uh, photomicrography where the bacterial cell will look like this. And this is the peritrichus, polar and lophotrichus type of bacterial cell you are seeing here. Then structurally a bacterial cell can be divided into five regions. First is surface appendages that is flagella and pili. Then surface adherents, capsules and slime layers. The capsule in the outermost layer and composed of dye or polysaccharide that forms a gelatinous slime layer around the cell wall. Then cell wall, it provides shape to the cell and protects underlying protoplasm having cytoplasm, chromatin, vacuoles and globules etc. On the basis of two types of chemical composition of cell wall, bacteria are grouped into two as gram positive and gram negative. Most of the plant pathogenic bacteria are either gram positive which are classified within the phylum actinobacteria where cells appear purple in color or gram negative in the phylum proteobacteria where cells appear red in color with specific stains when viewed at 1000x magnification with a light microscope. The different colors largely reflect differences in stain retention by the respective cell walls of the bacteria during the staining process. So here it is the difference between the gram positive and gram negative. It is the uh, slide showing you the, the when the we flood the heat fixed the smear of bacteria with crystal violet for one minute then all cells become purple in color. Then add the iodine solution for 3 minutes, all the cell remain purple. Then step 3 is the decolorize with alcohol briefly with about 20 seconds. And gram positive cells are purple, while gram negative cells are colorless. And 
counter stain with safranin for about 1 to 2 minutes you see the gram positive this is the gram positive cells are purple whereas the gram negative cells are pink to red in color and this shows the how under the normal compound microscope uh, we see the slide of positive and negative bacteria then cytoplasm and organelles they contain soluble cytoplasmic constituents nucleoid mesosomes ribosomes lamellae or thylakoid or vesicles and some reserve materials like granules then special structures are there in some bacteria they form sporulation structures and most characteristic spore structures are endospores exospores conidia spores that is echinids mixospores cysts and dellocytes then we divide and the group based on the burgis manual of the systematical bacteriology which was found in 1984 then first we come to the kingdom prokaryote here there is a division 1 which is having the cyanobacteria the blue green algae and myxophyce comes under this division then come the kingdom prokaryote in which the division 2 is there which is having bacteria part 1 is composed of phototrophic bacteria it is having one order three families and 18 genera then part 2 gliding bacteria it has two orders eight families and 21 genera part 3 is sheathed bacteria it is having 17 genera part 4 budding and appendages bacteria it is having 17 genera part 5 is spirochetes it is having one order one family and five genera and part 6 is spiral and curved bacteria it is having one family and two genera then part 7 has gram negative aerobic rods and cocci it has five families and 14 genera part 8 is composed of gram negative that is facultative anaerobic rods two families and 17 genera part 9 is constituted by gram negative anaerobic bacteria having one family and three genera and part 10 is of gram negative cocci and cocobacilli it is having one family and two genera then part 11 is composed of gram negative anaerobic cocci having one family and three genera part 12 is of gram negative chemolithotrophic bacteria two families and 17 genera and part 13 is of methane producing bacteria having one family and three genera part 14 is of gram positive cocci three family 12 genera part 15 is endospore forming rods and cocci it's one family and five genera and part 16 is gram positive asporogenous rod shaped bacteria it is having one family and one genus part 17 is of actinomycetes and related organisms it has four genera but not assigned to any family one family with two genera one order with eight families and 31 genera part 18 is rickettsias two order four families 18 genera part 19 is of mycoplasmas is one class one order two families and two genera we come to the vegetative reproduction in bacteria in bacteria the vegetative reproduction is through fragmentation through budding and through binary fission then we come to the fragmentation mostly under unfavorable conditions bacterial protoplasm undergoes a process of division or compartmentalization this results in subsequent fragmentation forming minute bodies called gonidia under favorable conditions each gonidium grows to a new bacterium it becomes apparent that prior to fragmentation the bacterial genome has to undergo repeated replication so that each fragment gets a copy of it then we come to the budding 
as we have seen in the fungi which is having the yeast uh, like structures and yeast is also uh, vegetatively reproduced through budding. In case of uh, bacterial cells budding is also there and in this case the bacterial cell is uh, showing the small protuberance called bud and this develop uh, at one end of the cell as we are seeing here and genome replication follows and one copy of the genome gets into the bud and then the bud enlarges eventually become a daughter cell and get separated from the parent cell and they become two. Then uh, we come to the binary fission. Under favorable conditions, fission is a common phenomenon. Here the cell divides into two similar daughter cells. The bacterial chromosomes attached to the cell membrane and replicates to the bacterial chromosomes. As the cell enlarges, the daughter chromosomes get separated. A cross wall is formed between the separating daughter chromosomes and it divides the cell into two daughter cells which grow to maturity within 30 minutes. And here this is how the prokaryotic chromosome is duplicated and then continue to grow in the cell and this forms the division into the two cells. We discussed about uh, uh, different types of symptoms caused by bacterial diseases in plants and uh, we also tried to find out that how we can uh, diagnose the plant diseases caused by different types of phytopathogenic bacteria in plants. Secondly, we today discussed about the classification in detail that how we can classify on the basis of flagella and the other arrangements uh, in the bacterial cell. And lastly, we discussed about the vegetative reproduction in the uh, bacterial cell in which the budding and fission and the lastly the binary fusion is uh, discussed. <laughs>